In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Iron Man has created 51 suits which we have seen, which is far more than any other character in that world. So buckle up, pull down your faceplate and strap on your nanotech because this is my biggest ranking yet, as I rank all 51 Iron Man suits from my least favourite to my favourite. Hello and welcome to Cinemates and this video is brought to you by you guys, my viewers. I've had a few comments asking me to rank all the Iron Man suits and you've been giving me so much support recently. I thought I'd give you what you wanted. As always, I need to set out my criteria for what I'm including in this ranking. The term Iron Man suit has become so common to refer to any kind of metallic or robotic suit worn by a hero. Suits like Batman's mech suit, the Iron Spider costume, Iron Heart, War Machine, or any of Iron Man's villains who build a suit could be considered Iron Man suit, even though they're not worn by Iron Man himself. However, limiting the list to just suits worn by Tony Stark's Iron Man actually ends up excluding a lot of the Iron Man suits that appeared in the MCU. Because a lot of suits appeared in Iron Man 3, but he didn't actually wear them. So what I decided to include were any suits created by Tony Stark in his collection of Iron Man suits all the way from the Mark 1 to the Mark 85. I'm ranking these based on my personal preference not based on what is strongest and my preference takes into account the story behind the suits, if they have any unique features, how good the CGI is, if they have any comic references and of course the design. Like I said Iron Man 3 has a lot of suits and most of these we don't see much of so they're inevitably going to be lowered down my list and I won't have too much to say about so I'll speed through them as far as possible. If you want to get to the main Iron Man suit, skip to the time code on screen, which is where the ranking gets to the main Iron Man suits from each film. But let's get right into the ranking. Number 51, the Mark 19. Coming in last is the Mark 19, nicknamed Tiger. I assume for its stripy mask, but it just looks bad. I don't think this color scheme works, and it ends up at the bottom of my list. Number 50, the Mark 27. Second from last is the 27th Iron Man suit, nicknamed Disco, for its crazy colors, which again, I just don't think look good. Apparently, it's designed for stealth but I think I'll spot this ugly colour scheme from a mile away. Number 49, the Mark 28, following the Mark 27, is another ugly colour scheme with the Mark 28, codenamed Jack. It's designed for protection against radiation, which I guess explains the hazardous looking colour scheme, but to me it doesn't look great, and we see much cooler radiation suit later up this list. Number 48, the Mark 36, nicknamed Peacemaker, the Mark 36 is designed to quell riot. A cool idea, but this bulky suit ends up looking more like a Transformer than an Iron Man suit. Number 47, the Mark 37, also known as Hammerhead, is designed to function under the deep sea. A cool idea that I wish we got to see in the film, the suit does have the feeling of a deep sea diver suit, but really it's not the best design. Number 46, the Mark 29. The Mark 29 is designed for construction and it features a jackhammer on one arm, similar to a fiddler crab. While it's a decent looking suit, unfortunately it gets the nickname Fiddler, which is just an awful name for a suit and we can't have a fiddler high up this list. Number 45, the Mark 35. This one is known as Red Snapper and it's designed to save people during natural disaster. A cool idea for the suit, but when we don't see it in action in its environment, it just ends up looking a bit silly. Number 44, the Mark 34, another suit designed for natural disasters named Southport. It is a bit sleeker than the previous one, so it doesn't look as bad, but again, when we don't see it serving its function, it just looks weird. Number 43, the Mark 14, just a super boring suit in between an Iron Man suit and a War Machine suit in look. It has a grey boring colour scheme and it features minimal weapons. It just isn't very memorable. Number 42, the Mark 24 with a cool code name like tank as it's designed to take heavy damage you'd hope that this would get higher up the list but unfortunately i'm not quite sold on this color scheme number 41 the mark 32 another boring gray looking suit but a bit more unique than the one before due to its large chest piece heart earning its nickname romeo number 40 the mark 31 code name piston i'm not quite sure how i feel about this suit is the color scheme cool or is it weird i'm really not sure and so it's not at the bottom of my list but it's still not at the top number 39 the mark 12 this one feels very warm machine with its square ahead and advanced weapon system. A decent design but it doesn't feel like Iron Man. Number 38 the Mark 13 again very war machine. Silver colour scheme, rectangular arc reactor and arm mounted weapon. It's a bit sleeker and more Iron Man feeling which gets it above the previous suit. Number 37 the Mark 18 nicknamed Casanova. This one looks kind of cool and it's intimidating. Apparently it's another stealthy suit and it does a good job at hiding because I really won't remember this one. Number 36 the Mark 15 another stealth suit and who would have guessed this one's named Sneaky. The first suit I've mentioned that we do actually see Tony Stark in, even if it's very briefly in Iron Man 3. And this one actually feels like it could be a stealth suit with a slightly more unique look and texture. Number 35, the Mark 16, more stealth suits again named Nightclub. And again, we do actually see Stark in this suit. Not the best design, but I do really like the shoulder ridges here, which makes it memorable. And I do actually remember this one appearing in the film. Number 34, the Mark 23. This one is nicknamed Shades and it's designed to be heat resistant. It has 
has an interesting camouflage design, but out of its environment, it looks a bit weird. Again, I wish we could have seen some of these suits actually being used for their intended use. Number 33, the Mark 40, another cool nickname, Shotgun, designed to fly at incredible speeds. A pretty decent design to match that, and we get to see Stark in this suit during the final fight. Number 32, the Mark 25, the Striker armor, also known as Thumper, another suit designed for construction. Not the coolest look, but it does feel big and intimidating. And I do really remember this one appearing in the film and you get points for being memorable. Number 31, the Mark 11. This one just feels like an Iron Man suit with a bit of a weird helmet. Nothing awful, nothing special. Number 30, the Mark 10. This one feels like an Iron Man suit, but with weird feet. Number 29, the Mark 8. Now this is the first suit built after the Avengers Battle of New York and it feels like another Iron Man suit. It's not a bad design, but we never see him in this one and so it really doesn't stand out. Number 28, the Mark 9. Again, another suit that just feels like a classic Iron Man suit. I think I prefer this one as it feels a bit bulkier and more intimidating and it has something to do in Iron Man 3. This is the suit that fails to stop targeting Pepper Potts and she uses its arm to help defeat Killian. Number 27, the Mark 49. One of the only suits worn by someone other than Tony Stark. This is the suit that we see Pepper Potts wear in Endgame, also known as the rescue armor. Weirdly, despite it appearing in Endgame and looking similar to the Endgame suit, in universe, this one was actually created before the Infinity War armor, which is Mark 50, and this one is Mark 49. It's cool to see Pepper get in on the action, but it does feel pretty forced. She basically only gets a suit so that she can be there when Stark dies. Pepper does get the rescue armor in the comics, but it's a different color. But this purple color scheme is actually a reference to Iron Man Armored Adventures, where she wears a suit of this color. One thing that holds it back is the CGI. This suit felt super fake, and the CGI looked really questionable, especially when the visor popped up. Yikes. Number 26, the Mark 22. This one is nicknamed Hot Rod for obvious reasons. And while I criticized other suits for feeling too much like War Machine, this one is different because it actually was a prototype War Machine suit, which Stark repurposed into his own suit. And I liked it. Instead of just painting the whole thing his color, he added just a bit of his own personality to it with the Hot Rod color scheme, which is a reference to that first Iron Man film. Number 25, the Mark 17, the Heartbreaker suit. This one has always felt super memorable to me. It's got a unique look. It feels strong and it has a powerful arc reaction and it has something to do in Iron Man 3. Number 24, the Mark 41, codenamed Bones. I just feel like this one is a cool and unique look. It reminds me of the ancient armor in Breath of the Wild and of course the black and gold inside out Spider-Man suit. And I wish we got to see more of this one. Number 23, the Mark 30. I think this one is just an awesome color scheme that works really well and it's got an awesome nickname to match, Blue Steel. Number 22, the Mark 38, nicknamed Eagle. I've always found this one to be one of the more memorable suits from the film that sticks out to me. It's designed for heavy lifting and protection and it helped lead to the creation of the Hulkbuster suit. Number 21, the Mark 21, a pure gold Iron Man suit. Who wouldn't want one? And it just looks awesome. Nicknamed Midas and it has comic references to the early Iron Man suit which were completely gold and potentially a reference to Iron Man 1 where Jarvis shows Stark a gold design before Tony suggests adding some hot rod red. Number 20, the Mark 20, named Python. Again, I think this is just an awesome color scheme. I think it works really well and it has comic connections with the Model 42 armor. Number 19, the Mark 26. This one is another suit designed for radiation but it's just a way better design. It's named Gamma and with its green color scheme it feels influenced by the Hulk. I think this one is just an awesome design and it's the only suit without a visible arc react. Number 18, the Mark 48. Another suit not worn by Stark, the Hulk Buster that we see in Infinity War, worn by Bruce Banner. It's a Hulk Buster suit which is always cool but it doesn't look as good to me as the original Hulk Buster suit. It's still a cool design but it is held back by some dodgy CGI and floating head issues. And we were robbed and I mean absolutely robbed of the original plan which almost happened for the Hulk to literally bust out of the Hulkbuster suit which would have been incredible. It was so close to happening that toys were even produced with this idea but unfortunately it was taken from us and it stopped this suit from getting any higher up this list. Number 17 the Mark 39 Gemini or Star Boost is designed for suborbital space travel and it looks perfect for that with this futuristic astronaut look. Coming off the Avengers and flying high up into the atmosphere it makes sense that Stark would want to build a suit that works better for that. Where we see a great progression in the Iron Man suits from the cave to the Mark 1 to more portable suits to nanotech to going into space. This feels like a step in that progression that we didn't get to see fully explored. Overall, an awesome design that I think looks great. I just wish we got to see more of it. Number 16, the Mark 33. Out of the non-main Iron Man suits from Iron Man 3, the one that gets highest up this list is the Mark 33, the Silver Centurion suit. And it's an awesome take on the classic Iron Man suit, replacing the gold with silver. I like how streamlined this suit feels, but it still feels intimidating. It's a reference to a super iconic 
iconic era from the comic where he wore the silver centurion suit and it translates really well to the big screen and it actually gets worn by Iron Man in the final battle so this one just really stands out. So now I've gone through all of the Iron Man suits which appear in the MCU which are not the main Iron Man suit. So the next 15 are all going to be the main Iron Man suit which we see Tony Stark wear across the film. Number 15 the Mark IV. My least favourite of the proper Iron Man suits we see Tony Stark wear is the Mark IV. This is the suit that we see at the start of Iron Man 2. Now it's not a bad suit, not by any means. It is a very traditional classic looking Iron Man suit. But there's also nothing memorable about this one. The classic look had already been done on the Mark III so it doesn't look particularly different and it doesn't have any unique qualities that stand out to me. It just feels like a transition suit that he uses because the previous Mark got destroyed and the story isn't ready for the next Mark yet. Number 14, the Mark 43, the suit that Stark wears at the start of Age of Ultron and again it feels like a transition suit from his Iron Man 3 suit to the main suit that he's going to wear in Age of Ultron. It feels very similar to his Iron Man 3 suit but with more red. The gold here has always felt a bit more muted which I never liked and it's just a bit boring to me. There's no major improvements in the Iron Man technology here with the coolest feature being the ability to go into sentry mode while Stark leaves the suit. Number 13 the Mark 47. This is the Iron Man suit which appears in Spider-Man Homecoming. It's almost identical to the suit in Civil War but with a large amount of silver. Now I do really like the base design of the Civil War suit but the silver just ends up making the suit look unfinished like they didn't finish painting it before Stark needed it. Normally there are major changes between each Mark Iron Man suit but this one is just basically a recolor which is weird in universe. Why didn't he make any serious upgrades like he usually does? Honestly this one just feels like they said Iron Man needs a new suit in each film and they need to sell toys but we don't have a budget to design a new suit. So they just took the digital model of one of the past suits and recolored it. Now it does have some positives we see Iron Man's ability to pilot the suit remotely which develops from Iron Man 3 and it does have comic origins in the Ultimate Universe where he has a suit with a similar colour scheme in the Iron Tech armour. Number 12, the Mark II. This suit appears in Iron Man 1 and it's Stark's first proper attempt at an Iron Man suit with his actual technology. It's a really good base design but of course the lack of the classic colour does make this one not the most visually interesting. But again, it's a transition suit. It doesn't do too much on its own, we don't see it for that long. The cool thing about this suit is that it does get repurposed and becomes the first ever war machine suit and we get an awesome fight between Stark and Rhodey using this suit which does make it more memorable. Number 11 the Mark 45. This is the other classic Iron Man suit we see in Age of Ultron and again there's just something about these basic Age of Ultron suits which are just pretty mid to me. Most films showcase an increase in Iron Man's technology from film to film but again we don't really see anything special here. The only real unique feature is that this is the first suit to use Friday instead of Jarvis. Now I do think it's an improvement over the Mark 43. It has a sleeker design and it feels more muscular and form fitting which I like. Also this has more red which I think hides the more muted gold colour that we see in Age of Ultron and overall I think it's a fine suit. Number 10 the Mark 6. Kicking off the top 10 is the Mark 6 the final suit in Iron Man 2 and the starter suit in the Avengers till it gets mashed up by a helicarrier propeller. Again it's a very classic look but this time with a triangle arc react and really that's what makes this one memorable. It has a few other cool things like shooting lasers, the ability to absorb Thor's lightning and how Stark Tower was able to take the suit off him rather than the previous iterations where he felt very bolted into the suit. His triangular design does have some comic book origins with the extremist suit and overall it's a cool look. Number 9 the Mark 7. Next up is the following suit the Mark 7 from the Avengers and I think this is a really cool development from the classic Iron Man look. We go back to the circular arc reactor and this one just feels chunkier a bit more heavily armoured and heavily weaponized, which really makes sense for fighting aliens. This is also the first suit we see with automated deployment and again continuing the slow improvements from each suit with this one being able to fly onto Iron Man if he wears a wristband and this really feels like the culmination of the first seven suits. Number eight the Mark 42 the Prodigal Son. This is the main Iron Man suit from Iron Man 3 and it's one of the more unique looking main suits. It features a lot more gold over parts that would traditionally be red and it makes this suit stand out. You see this suit and you know that it's the suit from Iron Man 3 because it looks a bit different. It also continues the technological advancement of each Iron Man suit this time having the ability to fly on to Tony Stark to suit him up based on technology inside his body which again again feels like the logical step from the previous suit in the Avengers and we see the ability to pilot a suit remotely. What also gets this suit high up my list is that this suit feels like a character in itself. This suit has a bit of a personality and that's because it's a prototype suit and it doesn't always work correctly and it makes it feel like it has this awkward quirky personality and it just leaves me with a really memorable suit. Number seven the Mark 50. Now we have the Iron Man suit from Avengers Infinity War and the thing that makes this unique is the nanotech. Having the ability to form around Iron Man and form unique 
unique tool. And I know some people just do not like the idea of nanotech on Iron Man suits because it takes away from the realistic feeling of the character. But it's never bothered me because we built towards it slowly. We see him get strapped into the suit, then we see him have portable suits, then suits that fly onto him. And so nanotech feels like the next logical step. And so I think it feels earned. Like the Iron Man 3 suit, this one has a unique look. You see this and you can tell that it's the suit from Infinity War. It also has a slightly sleeker look and it feels more futuristic. And that comes with comic book origins based off the bleeding edge armor and the model prime. Now I do have some issues with this suit. One of the things about most of the other Iron Man suits that is great is that almost all of them feel real. They feel practical, but this one feels fake. It feels CGI. It doesn't feel like a real texture or a tangible object. And I've also never liked the way the mask forms around his head. It just looks so weird and CGI. So overall, a cool idea for a suit, the next logical step in the Iron Man technology, but with a few flaws that hold it back. Number six, the Mark I. Next up, we have the suit that started it all, the Mark I. And I think it's just a great cinematic interpretation of the original Iron Man suit from the comics. It looks real, it looks practical, it looks gritty, it just looks awesome. It feels like it's made of scraps, it works perfectly for the story, and it led to the creation of the Iron Monger armor. Despite its short appearance, it leads to an incredibly memorable scene, and the abilities of this suit just really stand out because the moments were super iconic, like its bullet resistance, flamethrowers, and limited flight. Number Number five, the Mark V. Coming into the top five from Iron Man 2, we have the Mark V, which is the suitcase suit. And again, it's a suit with a very short appearance, but it's super memorable. And this is what I wish we saw from more of the endless amount of Iron Man suits that we saw in Iron Man 3. Short, specific uses of unique suit. And this is Iron Man's first suit designed to be portable with the ability to form from a briefcase. It's got a great function and a great look. It feels lighter and it feels made up of smaller pieces like it could form from a briefcase. And overall, a very memorable suit that works perfectly for its scene. Number four, the Mark 46. This is the suit that we see in Captain America Civil War. And overall, it's a very traditional Iron Man suit, which I think some people might think is boring. But for me, I think this is just a really great design. It's got a darker red and less gold and something about it leads to a more intimidating look, which aligns perfectly with the more antagonistic role that Iron Man plays in this film. This does unfortunately start the era of more CGI in the Iron Man suit, and it does lead to some floaty head problems at times, but overall it does feel real, and it does feel like a tangible object, especially when it comes to the more grounded hand-to-hand -hand combat scene. It has some memorable features like ability to analyze people's fighting styles. It also continues the trajectory of more portable suit, with this suit being able to launch from a helicopter. Overall, just a really fantastic looking tradition Iron Man suit with a few unique features while still having its own flavor. Number three, the Mark 44. Kicking off the top three is the Hulkbuster from Age of Ultron. For a film with two disappointing normal Iron Man suits, they really made up for it with this Hulkbuster. The design is great. It looks big, intimidating, strong, and it truly feels like a suit that could take on a raging Hulk. It continues the remote control suit ups from Iron Man 3, but now able to deploy from the atmosphere and provide replacement parts when needed, which is just an awesome addition. It feels like it's full of tricks designed to take down the Hulk and of course it leads to a fantastic fight scene between Hulk and Iron Man which is one of the standout parts of that movie. Overall it's a suit with big expectations and it really lives up to them. Number two the Mark III. The first classic looking Iron Man suit we get in the MCU the Mark III as the main Iron Man suit in the first film and they just immediately nailed the look of this character translating him from the comic perfectly. It feels like a real physical object that could genuinely exist. The commitment to realism really brings this suit to life. The general look and capabilities of the suit were maintained throughout the whole of the MCU because of how well it was set up here and it's just the perfect translation of a classic Iron Man suit. Number one, the Mark 85. But coming in at number one is the suit from Avengers Endgame, the Mark 85. Where the Mark 3 I just mentioned was the perfect translation of a traditional comic book Iron Man suit, the Mark 85 feels like the perfect Iron Man suit for the MCU because really it's a culmination of everything that came before. Maintaining the general look of the Mark 3 that he's always had but updating it for Iron Man's final appearance. It's actually one of the more comic book accurate suits, giving him yellow sleeves and legs and having a more muscular like sculpture, which we saw in the classic comics with the Ditko suit. It continues the nanotech from the Infinity War suit, but doesn't have quite as much of a futuristic look, going for a more classic mechanical bulky look. And that makes this suit feel more real and practical. Generally, the CGI in this suit feels far better than the Infinity War suit, which again helps it to feel real. And for Iron Man's final appearance, it makes sense to have his strongest suit ever, which feels influenced by all the other things that 
that came before. It's got new technology like energy shields, but it's got lasers like in Iron Man 2, got nanotech like in Infinity War. It can absorb Thor's lightning like the Avengers. It just feels like it's taking everything from before and perfecting it. And that works perfectly for Iron Man, who is always learning and improving. Overall, this gives us a very classic comic book and Iron Man feeling look. It maintains a tangible, physical and mechanical appearance while also feeling like the culmination of every Iron Man suit that came before it. And with all of these things together, it creates the best Iron Man suit in the MCU. And so the highest numbered suit gets the lowest rank on my list with the Mark 85 coming in at number one. I hope you enjoyed my ranking. This was a massive video to make, but it was really fun. So let me know your rankings down below in the comments. Do you agree? What's your favorite suit? If you like this, I've also ranked the Spider-Man suits and the Batman suit. So check those out if you haven't already. Let me know any other superhero suits you want me to rank in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. It helps my channel out so much. And if you're new here, subscribe for more videos like this on Marvel, DC, Star Wars, or anything else amazing going on in cinema right now. But for now, thanks for watching Cinemaze.